Hello guys, welcome back to the channel for a new Databricks video. Today's video is about how to trigger a Databricks notebook once we receive a file. There are two ways to do that. The old way, which is by using Data Factory, create a Data Factory pipeline that points to a Databricks notebook and then add the trigger so we can trigger the Data Factory pipeline once we receive a file on a storage account. This is the old way. The new way is by using the file arrival trigger on a scheduler directly on Databricks. This is something recent, more recent, but in order to, to do that, you have to enable Unity Catalog on your Databricks workspace. So first, you have to assign your Databricks workspace to a Metastore, right? This is how you enable Unity Catalog. Also, you have to upgrade to a premium account if you don't have on Databricks, otherwise you are not able to assign a Databricks workspace to your Metastore. So, in this tutorial, first we are going to see how to trigger a Databricks notebook via Data Factory and then directly on Databricks. Let's get down to business. Okay guys, so let's create our Data Factory pipeline, which is the first solution. Click on the pencil here, drop down, pipelines, new pipeline, and then here under Databricks, drag and drop the notebook uh, here icon, and then here where it says Azure Databricks, create a new uh, linked service. So let me create a new linked service connect by integration runtime, the auto-resolve integration runtime from Azure subscription, select your subscription, your Databricks workspace, and here this is my Databricks workspace, existing interactive cluster. So let me uh, actually see what cluster I have. I have, I, okay, I have a, uh, a cluster here, all-purpose uh, compute cluster. Let's go back to our Databricks pipeline. We need an access token. You can use Azure Key Vault and then secrets, uh, but for simplicity, we're going to use an access token. So let's go back here to our Databricks workspace, click on your account and then click on settings. And then we want uh, developer, I think, access tokens, manage, generate a new access token, test, whatever. And let's generate, copy that, paste it here, and then choose from existing clusters, let it load. It's going to load the clusters. And here, select your existing cluster or create a new one, or select from your instance pool. So you can test the connection as well. If everything is all right, let's create this uh, data factory pipeline, plain and simple quick and easy. So we have this uh, data factory pipeline. Now, the purpose here is to trigger the, a Databricks notebook. So first of all, let's browse our Databricks workspace by using the clicking the browse button, users. Under your user, I have only one notebook actually called test. So if we go back here, under workspace, I have this uh, notebook, we just print test. So whatever you have here, it will trigger this Databricks notebook. So now under settings, we specify the notebook path uh, via this browse button here. You can pass parameters if you want, etc, etc. But the purpose here is to demonstrate how to trigger this Databricks notebook when a file arrives on a storage account. So here I have a storage account and I have a container. Here I have already a file. So here when we upload a file, it's going, it needs to trigger the Data Factory pipeline, the one that we created. So let's uh, publish this uh, pipeline first of all, and then add a trigger. How you can click on the add trigger new edit, so we create a new trigger. Uh, choose trigger, create a new trigger, and then 
under under type use the storage events right because it happens when we have an event when we receive a file on our storage account this is an event and this is going to trigger the uh, data factory pipeline and then we have select your account name so i have uh, this is the storage apple as account name container name it's apple test right and let uh, i think we need slashes here yeah and you can fill in those blob path begins with or blob path ends with and click on the event blob created or blob, blob deleted but uh, in this case it's blob created in ignore empty blobs yes so click on continue this is fine uh, okay so continue okay and then publish because we added the trigger to this data factory pipeline so let's see what it's going to do once we upload the uh, once we upload the file on our storage account now in theory now that we have our trigger right we have the link services click on triggers we have the trigger here it uh, the status is started so that's fine and then if we click on the monitor uh the triggered pipeline there is nothing here but let's upload the csv file for example here let's upload the file upload uh, we uploaded this csv file right now we have to wait until this uh, data factory pipeline is triggered you have to wait uh, a minute or two in order to trigger the data fa factory pipeline in the meantime let let me spin up the cluster because we are going to use this cluster as you can see uh when we uh use this cluster in our data factory in our linked service and it's going to spin up this cluster as it is doing already right in order to run the databricks notebook let's see if this one is triggered no results yet let's see storage events it should be it should uh something should come up here in your monitor under trigger uh, runs right let's wait for a couple of minutes and i will come back in a sec as you can see the data factory pipeline it was triggered and it was succeeded here you can check actually the status and what uh, happened and here it's going to navigate to your databricks uh, workspace and to your databricks notebook that was triggered and you will be able to see the run and here we print it test so this is one way to trigger a databricks notebook via data factory using a trigger now just to mention here before when you add the trigger uh here when you add the trigger you have to enable event grid how can you do that so go into your subscription actually scroll down where it says uh resource providers and here filter by event and you will see event grid here you have to register and enable event grid if you don't do that then the trigger it's not going to work so you have to enable event grid before you add the trigger to your data factory so that's one way using data factory let's move to the second way using the file arrival trigger directly in databricks let's create a workflow and let's create a job here so here create a simple job and then select your notebook the notebook that you want to trigger actually and here is your cluster etc etc and here on your schedules and triggers as you can see now it's done click on add trigger save and continue and then add a trigger right now here is the cuts here it has file arrival 
If you haven't enabled Unity Catalog, you won't have this option. It will only have scheduled and continuous. It's not going to have file arrival unless you enable Unity Catalog. How can you do that? By assigning your Databricks workspace to a Metastore, right? So how can you do that? Here on your um, accounts or your accounts console, uh, you need to use this uh, link here, accounts.azuredatabricks.net, etc., etc., in order to be able to um, access your account console here. You have to create a Metastore. Now I have already done that, so you first you have to provide a name, whatever, and then you have to provide the region, right? And then you have to provide a path to your uh, data lake. So here, if you... Uh, let me open up my storage account, this one. I have a new, uh, another storage account. I have enabled uh, the uh, data lake uh, here. And then under this uh, container, I have this directory here, etc., etc. So here you have to provide your path to ADLS, right? Uh, you can see it here by default, and then you need to provide your access connector ID. Now, the access connector ID is where if you you have to create an access connector for Azure Databricks. So, access connector for Azure Databricks, I have already created one here. And then here, as you can see, the resource ID, you copy that and you paste it here. This is fine. But before you do that, you actually have to provide access um, access to your storage account on this access connector for Azure Databricks. So here, this, this uh, Azure component, as um, if you will, you need to be able, it needs to be able to access your storage account and to have the blob storage um, contributor role. So you go back to your storage account that you have enabled ADSL, ADLS, sorry. And then here under access control, you have to click on add at role assignment. Come on. So here, scroll down where it says uh, storage blob data contributor, click on next, then select managed identity and select members, and then select the managed identity type. Here is access connector for Azure Databricks, and then click on your access connector that you just created, select next and review and assign. So you provide the storage blob data contributor role, I have already done that, right, to your access connector, and then you use the access connector resource ID here, and you provide the path to your ADLS, and you create your Metastore, and then it says assign to workspaces. So if you go here, as you can see, I have one Databricks workspace, and it's assigned to this Metastore. How you, can you do that? Here on the Metastore, you click on workspaces, assign to workspace, and this is how you do you assign your workspace to the Metastore, and this is how you enable Unity Catalog. So, back to our Databricks uh, environment. Actually, let's go into Catalogs, and here under the main catalog and the default schema, I have, uh, I, I created a volume. So, click on Create Volume, uh, and then provide the name, test, whatever. This is a managed volume, right? So let's create a managed volume. And here you you see the path, right, for this volume. Click on that. And then when you go back to your Databricks workflow job, and here where you add the trigger, you select file arrival. And then here you have to provide the storage location. As you can see, it gives you examples. And here we provide the volume with slash at the end test trigger, and the results is success. Click on save. And now the 
Uh, workflow is created successfully. Here, as you can see, the trigger is file arrival, and there are no recent runs. But if we go back to our uh, volume here and upload to this volume, let me upload uh, a file and upload this CSV file, right? Give it a second. Yep, we uploaded the CSV file. And then wait a minute, and this pipeline, this Databricks workflow, actually is going to be triggered and run the Databricks notebook that we have specified in the job. Now, if you open that up, as you can see, the under schedules and triggers, the file arrival is uh, being triggered every minute. So you have to wait, right? No. Okay, initial evaluation found files run. There is one file. So we expect this uh, workflow to be triggered. Let's go back and wait about, you know, like uh, a minute or so, and you will see your workflow running. Okay, guys, as you can see, the trigger worked. The pipeline, the workflow run successfully. And here you can see the actual result when we run the Databricks notebook, and then we printed test as we expected. So if you go back to workflows, you will see the recent runs. And here, as you can see, the trigger is file arrival, which is a pretty nifty, you know, uh, tool here to use when you, if you frequently receive files, you don't have to use data factory anymore. There is, they added this file arrival trigger, but of course you have to enable Unity Catalog. I really like this feature, this uh, file arrival trigger in Databricks, so we don't have to use Data Factory, but there are limitations. So here you can, uh, on the Databricks node, uh, documentation, you can search and find this article where it says everything about this trigger, trigger jobs when new files arrive. You can use file arrival triggers to trigger a run on your Databricks job when a new file arrive in an external location uh, or in your volume or whatever. File arrival triggers uh, make a best effort to check for new files every minute, although this can be affected by the performance of the underlying cloud storage. File arrivals do not incur additional costs, which is good, other than cloud provider costs associated with listing files in the storage location. A file arrival trigger can be configured to monitor the route of a Unity catalog, external location, or volume, or a subpath of an external location or volume. Here it provides some examples, requirements. Your workspace must have Unity catalog enabled. And then there are some limitations. Only new files trigger runs. Overwriting an existing file with a file of the same name does not trigger a run. A maximum of 50 jobs can be configured with a file arrival trigger in a Databricks workspace. A storage location configured for a file arrival trigger can contain only up to 10,000 files, etc., etc. The path used for a file arrival trigger must co not contain any external tables or months, locations of catalogs and schemas. The path used for a file ar arrival trigger cannot contain wildcards, for example, star or question mark. And here, this is a tutorial of how you can uh, use uh, this trigger. This is it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and you learned something new. You can start using the file arrival trigger in Databricks directly instead of using Data Factory if you wish. You can play around and see what uh, is more suitable for you, of course. If you like the video, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.